Welcome to Waiting into Retirement. I'm Mike. And hi, I'm Laura. And in this episode, we are going to talk about a healthy lifestyle heading into retirement. So stay tuned. So we're back. We are. So this week we're going to talk a little bit about probably health and fitness would be the topic. So uh, it probably goes without saying that I've gotten a little Poco Gordo. <laughs> well, you're saying that because you're coming from a place where Michael completed an Ironman a couple of years ago. So anything compared to that, you would be a little bit Gordo. Poco Gordo. I wouldn't quite go that far. Now, me, on the other hand, a couple years ago, I think I was heavier than I am now. However, my weight has been fluctuating up and down, and I'd like to see it go down. So when you're thinking about retirement, one of the things you want is longevity. Yes. Which means being probably a little bit healthier than we have been in the last handful of years anyways. Yes. So we put a bit of a focus on health and fitness. And so what has that meant for us so far? Well, that's a good point because, you know, although we started talking about healthy lifestyle and weight, I'm not sure that weight is really a good way for us to start. I think for me and for us, the healthy lifestyle really has been to eat a healthier diet, which means eating more local, more fresh. And we're even doing things like buying local honey to help boost our immune system. And we are working on our keto diet, but probably a lot, little less meat and a little more vegetables. Hmm. See, for me, it's all about the weight. I know. So I weigh myself every morning. I have for probably 20 years. I have it in a spreadsheet. I graph it. That's probably not a surprise to anybody that's listening. So for me, it's all about the weight. I have a certain weight I would like to get to that would make me feel like I'm healthier. Maybe that's a fallacy, but that's just, that's me. That's the way I operate. So, so I think there are certain aspects to that. Healthy eating definitely helps. Fitness, getting your heart rate up a few times a week, whether it's jogging, biking, walking the dogs, that's all part of it as well. But I think it's a big equation and it's a complicated equation. Oh, very much so. And especially since we are both still working full time. So you have to fill that fit that into our day. And part of the diet is, you know, cooking and eating more at home because we do tend to eat out quite a bit. It's a lot harder to monitor the calories and our intake when we're at a restaurant. So you have been starting to do a little bit more active fitness though. The running? The running. Yeah. 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 So I've gotten back into running. But, but it's been disappointing because I'm two weeks in and the weight is the same. Yeah. So it's easy to get uh, discouraged. Yeah. But, but I know in the long run, I've been down this road many times before that you have to stick with it and it's a slow process. But I think for me, it would have been easy to say, let's just wait till we retire and we have more time to devote to maybe health and fitness. But I'm not sure that's wise you have to build that into your lifestyle now and then continue it on into retirement well and i think i'm listening to my body a little bit more because i'm a big fan of the couch to 5k so i was running 5k you know a couple months ago i was doing 5 6k and at a, a fairly good speed and when we got back into this time i'm more focusing on you brought up the heart rate so i'm actually doing walking on an incline and trying to keep my heart rate at a, a more burning mm -hmm. level rather than having the impact of doing runs. Although I do kind of miss the runs and the endorphins that that releases and walking the dogs. So not just doing it um, on a treadmill, but also walking because we are going to be doing a lot of walking in retirement. But as you can see, we're both wearing hoodies. It's kind of hoodie weather. So it's actually perfect running, walking weather here in Ontario. 
It's actually perfect weather to be going down south, is what it is. It is that too. That it, but we'll we'll get into a little bit more of that later. This is the darkness of winter. Yes. That is just beginning. Yes, yes, that is. But you know, we just talked about physical activity, diet. What are the other components? Do you think for healthy living, though? Are you referring to mental? Components? I am. Well, because we started to kind of branch out in our reading again a little bit more. Mm -hmm. We've been focusing more on Mexican history and culture for our mm -hmm. reading material. And we started to swing back into a little bit more um, healthier. Mm -hmm. And what, what does that entail? So you're talking about like philosophy books, self-improvement, yeah. self-help books. Well, finding purpose. Mm -hmm. you know, and sticking with it and goals that are happy and healthy for us. And I know I've been starting to branch also into, I've been taking vitamins, looking at our sleep schedule, trying to make sure that we're getting the right amount of rest. Yep. So it's complicated. It is complicated. It's multifaceted. There's for some people, weight or fitness isn't an issue and they have a very active mental capability and that keeps them going and they live a long life. It's just, you have to be happy with whichever route you're taking and maybe being a little Poco Gordo <laughs> might, might be a, a good thing long-term, but right now I think we're both a little bit unhappy about where we're at physically with health. Yep. Well, and I so. think that that's a good spot for us to start and then branch out from there. I, I always think that this part of fitness isn't a one size fits all because I've started getting back into yoga too, which is a little bit slower exercise. I'm not doing the weight lifting and weight training and all mm -hmm. of those types of things. I'm, I'm looking more at a gentler moderation. Yes, that too. So keeping it so that we're doing it three, four times a week. I'm also trying to monitor my steps and hit that 10,000 steps per day, which some days when you're working and sitting at a desk is really, really tough and it's busy at work. So getting the walk in before work, and I know you've been doing your run after work before you get home sometimes even. Yep. Yep. So, th so having this conversation hopefully makes us feel a little more accountable to all of our ah. viewers. Yeah, and don't hesitate. If you've got some ideas, reach out, let us know um, things that you've tried, things that work that work for you. We have been a little bit sedentary. So how did you get your start and your journey on your way back to mm -hmm. fitness? And I'll add that um, the pinned comment below, um, buy me a coffee. If you're interested in buying us a coffee, we like coffee. Yes, we do. But no pastries, apparently. Yes, <laughs> yes. Coffee, this. black, no cream. <laughs> No sugar, but still, we'd appreciate it if you clicked on that link and uh, donated and bought us a coffee. And also, if you haven't already subscribed, click the subscribe button below. That would help as well. That would. So we will give you an update on this little bit of a weight loss journey or journey towards a healthier lifestyle might be a way to put it. Um, but that's it for this week. So hopefully you got something out of this. And uh, as Laura said, feel free to comment below. Bye for now.